what is dynamic NAT? Dynamic NAT is when we're trying to hide the infrastructure behind a single IP, for example, on the firewall, when we're trying to hide behind the, behind the interface IP. But we can also hide it behind the um, dedicated IP or a subnet. Subnet is mostly used if if you do if you need to do the hide nut on a scale. For example, you try to hide a large wide area network behind one ongoing firewall, uh, and you know one IP wouldn't be sufficient for all the source IPs to to be hidden behind. So you you can use the subnet for for the scale. So the traffic when comes from the LAN or this could be a DC or as I mentioned it could be a it could be when when it goes in two direction goes to the internet that's the most common setup but it could also mean it goes to the different network you just need to hide the source ip address um, goes to the file will be hidden behind a single ip uh, hide not that different times used in a, in the industry there is a hide not uh, not overload those dynamic source not all those means that you're hiding the traffic uh, behind the, behind one or multiple IPs. So let's look at our lab today. So I have my firewall, I have my testing machine, I will be reaching out to the internet and I will try to hide the um, IP addresses or in my case is the one source IP behind the I will try behind the interface IP, so dedicate uh, exactly the interface IP which is configured here. I will then also try to hide it uh, behind a different IP and uh, also behind the subnet. So let's start. So on your firewall, not policies are under the policies tab. And the not. And as you can see at the moment there is a zero not configuration. Uh, I will click at policy now. You need to give it a name, so uh, I will call it dynamic dash nut. Uh, I will be translating IPv4. If you want to give it a description, you can. The original packet. Now, because my lab is quite simple, I have two zones, internal and external, on LAN and WAN. Uh, if you have a multiple zones, you need to specify, or you can also take the any zone and it will cover every zones for the original packet. In my case, I can say, yeah, I'm going from the LAN. Destination zone in my case is a van. Uh, that is enough. I only have one interface there, so I don't have to specify any, any interface. Source IP address can be any, or you can specify, again, you can specify uh, subnet there if you want to specify for example you have a multiple subnets you want to be precise and destination address can be also stays any so that will cover most of the traffic come that will cover all the traffic which is coming from the LAN zone now the translated packet so that's the important bit for the for the NAT so in my case I want to do dynamic IP and port uh, this is how the Palo Alto documentation says this is this is the dynamic NAT and address translated address in my first scenario we will use the interface so my interface is a zero slash one it's already configured with the ip address uh, so i can just pick was it a zero slash one yeah zero slash one ip address i don't have to specify i can leave it as none but if i drop down it already show me the ip address which is configured on my uh, when interface but i'll leave it as an answer we can we can we can see it works so and translation type is none okay let's see at the rule from lan to when any any that's fine dynamic ip port and an interface uh, and that should be it i just hit the commit commit the configuration now, while the confirmation uh, commit a configuration is running, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It will help me to grow it. Commit is completed. Close the window. Ah, oh, we can already see I have some hit count here. Uh, I think I have a ping running here to public DNS. Uh, we can see it start running, which is good. Uh, so ping is running now. Uh, and now let's have a look if we have a 
internet access. Yes, seems we have internet access. That's fine. Uh, let's also look at the monitoring tab where you can see from each bucket if it's been translated. So we see our ping is running here. I'll do just a refresh. So we have the latest latest logs messages. Uh, and let's have a look. Now we configure the hide nut for the with the interface. So it's mean the a bucket that's been uh, translated should have the IP address of the interface. Let's have a look. Yes, so we have our source, which is 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. That's my that's my test machine here. And it's going from LAN, that's correct. Destination is WAN, destination 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8. uh, one slash one and a source was translated to 192 18 18 5 and that's correct because that's um, configured on my interface we can have a look 192 18 18 5 yeah so the translation or the source nut is working fine now let's change the nut and change it to the different ip than its interface for example if you have a larger subnet assigned to your wan interface uh, you don't want to be the hide night the same IP as the interface. It sometimes makes life easier if you use a different IP. For example, the interface IP is also useful for the termination of the IPsec tunnels. And so it doesn't mean it will not work, but it's just from the design perspective, it's, it's better to separate them. So let's go back to policies. And now we change the we don't have to create a new one, we can just change it. So open the nut rule. Now we can leave everything as it was before. We have the source, destination, any, any. Now the translated bucket, address type. I will not use the interface address. Uh, I will select a translated address now. And now you can insert the address. Now I want to change it. To, so interface IP, interface IP was 192.18.18.5 so I can do 192.18.18 and I will pick for example 50 because I have a slash 24 subnets on the WAN interface and it will be slash 32 I click OK and I will hit commit. Now, commit is completed. So I close the window, hit counts is still, still running. I'm pretty sure I should be able to reset, uh, reset the hit count. Good. Let's see if my ping is still running. Yeah, so it looks like the internet access is still there. Uh, we can also test the... yeah that also looks promising it's good now let's have a look now let's have a look at the monitor tab if the nut IP has changed if I go and open the first uh, maybe do refresh first yeah let's have a look at this bucket now we can see the new translated IP address uh, is 192.18.18.50, which is the IP address we, we configured for the for the dynamic NAT or source NAT. So, so destination 8.8.8. .8. Now, great. So that is working. So you can see you can use the interface IP on the Palo Alto firewall, or you can use a different IP from your um, pool of IP addresses that it's configured on your, on your firewall. The third option is when you think the single IP would be not sufficient for all the users or for all the traffic which is coming from from your internal zones or from the zones from the source zones you want to translate it for to have access to for example to the internet or to, to the different network and uh, for that option you can configure the subnet and the firewall will pick the IP addresses from that from that subnet you configure from that pool and that means if you configure, for example, slash 29, you will have a multiple IP addresses that can be used for the for the source nuts, and uh, and then you can then you can easily scale it for the for the source IP addresses um, uh, to be translated. So let's have a look at this last option. So we go back to the policies, 
Now again, we can use the same rule. We will just change the translated IP address. Translated packet. Here in the translated address, I'll change it to, for example, to 16 slash 29. Uh, I'm not typing, so sorry. 16 slash 29. Hit OK. And I commit configuration. Now, commit is completed successfully. You can see it's configured here. Uh, I will again um, reset the hit counter. Great stuff. Let's see if the ping is still running. Ping is still running. That's good. Let's have a look if we have uh, internet access. Yeah, looks promising. That's good. Now let's look at the monitor tab. I'll refresh it again so we have the latest messages. Uh, let's have a look at the last entry in a in a logs. So we are I'm in a traffic logs. If you're looking for the those translated or to see we want to see the packets and what's the translated IP address, you need to be in a traffic logs. Now we can see uh, again we have the same source, same zone source, and a destination zone as in previous examples. And we can see the NAT IP is 192.18.18.18. .18. Now we configure 16 slash 29. You can see the firewall doesn't even pick up the first IP address in that subnet, and it will pick uh, the IP addresses from the pool as it as it needs it. So that's it. That's how you configure the source NAT uh, or dynamic hide NAT on Palo Alto Favos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.